Good evening, RacketFest. Today, I want to give a little demo of a tool I've been developing to help me typeset my lecture notes. So lately, I've been teaching introduction to compilers using a nanopass approach, which means each week I have many passes, many intermediate languages. Each week, we also extend the previous iteration of the compiler with some new feature. This means I have lots of grammars with lots of small differences that I need to typeset and share with students. Now, I started out by using Racket Grammar, just typesetting everything manually using Racket, uh, using Scribble's built-in Racket Grammar. Now, this works okay. So here you can see I've typeset uh, two grammars, some little lambda calculus meant to represent my source language and some little target calculus meant to represent my target language. And you can see the output grammars down here. So here I have two non-terminals in my source language, and you can see I've typeset one of them using a, an escape to symbol. So this is just a convention I've been using in the class. For anything that's too complicated to define syntactically, I typeset it as a link to the racket uh, to a racket predicate that defines that non-terminal. So here I've defined one version of our source and target calculi, and typically what I'll do each week is add some new feature to the grammar. So I can use Racket Grammar to specify new versions of my grammars. So here I've added an integer construct and uh, I've added addition, and I've done the same thing in the target grammar. And you can see now I have to, sorry about that. Now I have to sprinkle integer ha huh, and some escapes into the grammar. Now, if you're staring at this very quickly, you've got like a dozen of these to stare at. You can figure out what the differences are, but when you have a dozen of them, you want to be able to visualize the differences much more quickly than scrolling up and down and trying to figure out what has changed. And that's why I've developed Better Grammar. So Better Grammar provides an enriched specification language for typesetting grammars that captures a few of the conventions and patterns into a little language. So the first thing it does, you can use it as a drop-in replacement for Racket Grammar. It takes basically the same specifications for non-terminals and it will render almost the same. But it also takes two keyword arguments, literals and datum literals. So all the literals, you can see here, symbol ha huh, is a literal. And these are the things I want uh, rendered as a racket literal with links to the documentation. So that prevents me from having to sprinkle unescape, uh, un unsyntax all over my grammar. And the second is datum literals, which just represents things that I want rendered as keywords rather than italicized like non-terminals. So this prevents me from having to do a lot of manual typesetting but it gets a little bit better. So in Better Grammar, grammars are objects themselves. So we can actually manipulate them, define them, and work with them as objects. So here we can define our source v1 grammar and our source v2 grammar. And you see that I define them and then I typeset them separately. So down here, I call Better Grammar with one of these identifiers that I've defined, source v1. The same way I could pass it a literal grammar definition, I can pass it any defined grammar definition and it gets rendered the same way. It remembers all of literals and datum literals declarations, which is nice. You get a couple of other features when you define a grammar. So here I've defined v1 and it is a grammar you can typeset, but it's also a transformer. So if you pass it an expression inline, that will get typeset inline in the same way it got typeset in the grammar. So here lambda is a keyword, the same way it was in the grammar, and symbol is a literal the same way it was defined in the grammar. So that's useful. Um, that's very useful for typesetting examples in the lecture notes. The other big thing I do is obviously I want to typeset differences and I don't want to typeset the differences manually. So we can take two grammars and easily compute their differences and render the difference uh, automatically. So here I'll define two new versions, our extended grammars, our source v2 and our target v2. These are the same definitions we saw above, we're just adding integers and plus. And then instead of calling better grammar, we call better grammar diff. And we just pass them to the two grammars we want to see the differences between. And it will automatically compute the differences between these two grammars and render them. So anything that's been added is highlight, highlighted with this blue background and this plus annotation. And anything that's been removed from the grammars will be highlighted in red with a little minus annotation. Now, the difference algorithm here is a bit naive. It just uses the S expression, uh, S expression diff algorithm from the uh, package catalog, but it works pretty well in most cases. I could probably write a better domain-specific diff algorithm, but uh, I haven't really needed to yet. Okay, so typesetting just pairs of differences works really well, but 
the common use case I have in my class is we have some compiler pass and we're extending it from last week with some new features. So really what I want are three pairs of differences. So I wanna be able to view the difference between the source and the target language so I can focus on what changes are being implemented by this compiler pass. I want to be able to view the old and new source language so I can visualize what cases need to be added this week. And I want to be able to view the old version and the new version of the target language so I can see what new features might be in the output of my compiler. So this, for this, Better Grammar provides the Better Grammar ndif uh, form, which, which takes any number of pairs of languages and typesets all of their differences in this little tabbed interface. So here I've got three different diffs that I've typeset. It takes a handful of, uh, of optional arguments. So here I've added labels to each of these tabs. So here I can see the differences between the source and target languages. I've got some extra non-terminals that have been added and some forms have disappeared while they've been replaced by other non-terminals. We can also obviously see the same view we saw earlier, the differences between the source and the differences between the target. Now this specification language takes a whole bunch of optional keywords uh, arguments so I can include or exclude things that I don't really want typeset. So here I can, since integer and x don't actually change, I could just exclude them from the typesetting and it will do that for me. So this gives me a, a nice little language for easily typesetting all of my grammars. But we can go a little bit further because Better Grammar provides these, this grammar structure as a data structure, clients can easily implement their own transformations over grammars. So one of the things we've done in the course is I've actually uh, compiled each of these typesettable grammars to Redux languages. Basically this typesetting language is a, a subset of the Redux pattern language. So we can easily transform the grammar into a Redux language. And from that uh, we get a Redux language we can use for pattern matching. So we can use it to build recognizers for the different non-terminals in the language. So here I've used define grammar pred. It has the same interface as define grammar. I give it the non-terminal name and the grammar definition. And you can see I can still typeset this grammar. So if I call better grammar, I get some scribble output. Uh, this is the definition of the E non-terminal. But it also defines two other identifiers. So I've get the uh, here I get target v2 huh, so it appends the question mark to the end of this identifier, and I have target v2 l, the l for a Redux language. The predicate recognizes the first non-terminal in the grammar, so here I'm recognizing that this is in fact an e in my grammar. And if I want to recognize all the other non-terminals, so if I want to recognize int or uh, v, then I can just use Redux match, pass it the uh, Redux language, and a pattern and some S expression, and it will recognize whether that's actually part of the grammar I defined. I use this to generate contracts for all of my compiler passes in the reference implementation. Okay, so these are all the features that I really wanted to show off today. If you want to take a look at this package, if you think it'll be useful, you can find it on GitHub and it's on the package server at Scribble Better Grammar. Uh, it has some documentation, some of the features aren't all documented yet, but you can feel free to ask me questions. Thank you all very much for coming.